Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and in this week's episode, we're dealing with the old ones, the really old ones, from the deep dark, from the eldritch places. Evil. You should probably stop it. And Cthulhu Death May Die. So I have to admit, I don't know anything about Cthulhu or Arkham or Eldritch Horror or any of these things. It's just for some reason always been on the periphery. I've been aware of it. I've been aware of a raft of games about it and books and video games and all sorts of things. I don't know whether there are any TV shows around Cthulhu. Probably were. There are probably movies. But there seems to be a lot of games around it. And what drew me to this game, like a lot of sort of command games, is really the miniatures. They're great value for money. You get a bunch of stuff in it. They're generally beautifully sculpted, sometimes hit and miss on the molding, but they're generally okay. You're not going to feel shortchanged, I don't think. And I'm not ashamed to admit that I love commands, miniatures, heavy board games, especially ones with a one player mode, because there's a chance I'll actually play those like Zombicide Invader, Massive Darkness, the upcoming Bloodborne, which I backed, but I guess we'll see it at some point next year. Who knows? And this was another one of those. Miniatures look fantastic. Uh, it had the one-player mode. I saw some recognizable names on it, like Guillotine Games, Eric Lang. And I'm pretty psyched, just glancing at the back of this box. And so let's get into it. Let's have a look at these fantastic minis. And let's see how it measures up to the other Come On games that I've unboxed here. Massive Darkness, like Zombicide Invader, the ones I've just mentioned. And also the others as well, which is one of the first videos. I'll link all of those down in the uh, show notes below. But for now, let's have a look at Cthulhu Death May Die. Look at this art on the front. Look at this front cover. It's so dark. It's got these, this fantastic, you know, Cthulhu coming out over the, the logo. The logo's all, you know, spiky hands and whatever this creature of the deep is and tentacles. And I love this blend from this sort of, mossy rotten green through to the blood red at the bottom with the, the sort of the glow the death may die is lit in uh, or it's um highlighted in silver paint and i think the eyes as well hopefully you can just see that shimmer and you can see the death may die at the bottom and it's just the way they catch in that kind of a silver highlight which is a lovely touch and that is repeated again on the side and I think the other side's the same. Yep. So we'll just have a look at the back here as well. The ritual is nearly complete. The unspeakable old ones will enter our world. You can't stop it. You have to destroy them. Brilliant. Uh, it looks like some kind of a sort of a crawling experience here, but I don't really know. Maybe these are from the instructions. Maybe you have to set up layouts or maybe you discover them as you explore. I guess I'll find out when I crack open the instructions. So nice clear idea of what you're getting here you know really really actual clear component sort of listing uh, you can see the involved companies here from come on getting games you see it's one to five players 14 plus taking 90 to 120 minutes that's quite long you know like a two hour game that's a, that's a commitment of time but at least you know what you're getting into from the beginning here uh, just look at those miniatures and a really clear breakdown of all of the components. Lovely. Uh, not a linen finish box here. It is just uh, like a matte laminated cardboard. But it's fine. And it's heavy. So let's get it open. Come on. <laughs> okay. So straight away we can see these investigator boards. Um... Let's have a look at the back here. Sister Beth, Bogota, Colombia. At the front, Adam. Shoot first, never ask. Uh, and I guess the um, breakdown here will be specific to each of these investigators. I just want to have a look at the others here while we're at it. Okay, we'll look at them from this side. So there's Sister Beth. Pretty nice art. I repeated it on the back. Would have been nice to maybe have a different... Um, 
image of Sister Beth here on the back, just as sort of an alternative, you know, stance or something, or yeah, like a detail shot or something. I don't know, but pretty good. Um, quite solid cardboard. We got India. Uh, sorry, I mean John Morgan, uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's from Indiana, of course he is. Uh, and looking pretty good. I got a bad feeling about this. We've seen this before from Come On where they reference other movies in an almost Easter egg fashion where it's just kind of like a little bit of a nudge. Hey, you know the reference material? Um, sometimes more subtle than other times. Uh, let's see what we have here. The kid. And her. <laughs> it's just this crazy laughter. That's, that's her catchphrase. And then again, the, somewhere on the back, you know, we've got Sergeant Ian Wells from Jonesboro, Maine. Looks like a veteran of some conflict, maybe First World War. And then we have Borden. Two things are certain in life, death and axes. Nice. That's a great image as well there. And then we have Ahmed Yassin from Mersin, Turkey. What is written is written. Fatima or Fatima Safar from Alexandria, Egypt. Admittedly, old ones names are easier to read than say. <laughs> Elizabeth Ives from London, England. I like this sort of flapper dress and everything. That's really cool. Gives you a nice feeling for uh, when this is set. Rasputin from Moscow, Russia. Sigh. Dead again. <laughs> Lord Adam Benchley from Manchester, England. Shoot first, never ask. Cool. Yeah, they're pretty nice. They're, they're a nice size as well. These are... Um, that's that's, that's kind of cool. A lot of these uh, player cards can be quite small at times. So let's have a look at the rule book. And again, the, the same art as the, the front cover. And it is in, I guess... What's that? Just check the dimensions here. So we're roughly 10 inch square per page. So 20 by 10 fold out. And a really nice full color breakdown of everything. This feels like a very small rule book, but uh, some good art here. A bit sort of cut and paste. Looks like. Um, yeah, a lot of the art here looks like sort of cut and paste that they've... Rather than being sort of custom designed for this space, for this rule book, it's just sort of done for the, the other things and then it's chopped out and stuck on. But it's okay. It's still... It's just an aesthetic thing. How to use the investigator cards here. You can see the miniature there. How it's tied with these rings as well. Setting up. Dice and checks, the turn sequence, so we have run, attack, rest, and then trade. Then the episode actions as well, draw a mythos card, investigate or fight. And more repeated art, there's a bit of new art here, but I don't really know what it is. Some freakish hell monster. And how to end the game. Okay, and then a rule summary in the back, which is always handy. The half, and then we have all of the tiles. And just looking at the ones here on the front and back. A really nice sort of moonlit boat there. This um, interior, I'm not sure what of, maybe a planetarium or something, or an observatory. And some different rooms there, a hall of sort of paintings and things. And we have other types of tokens. A lot of very, you know, small little rooms. And some more, what looks like sort of scientific equipment. That one's definitely a telescope. And then we get into the nuts and bolts. And this is beautifully presented. This is just gorgeous. I mean, a real level of thought and consideration and, and care for aesthetics went into this. 
these episode boxes here, one through six, the investigator miniatures, some of the creatures, the bigger creatures here, the plague, you know, some of the cards, some of these patient medical files, Arkham Sanitarium. And it's really nicely done. It's like it's been typed out as well on a you know, proper sort of ink typewriter. Those are lovely, but just the whole thing has is, is really impressed me here. Let's have a look. And this is like a band that goes around this to keep it in place. And it has that really nice Art Deco look to it, that, that design. And let's have a look at these minis. Oh, that is very nice. I wasn't sure about this color of plastic when I first glanced in there, but it actually shows the detail really well. Uh, sometimes when you get sort of these um, pre-built minis, occasionally the, the colors that they produce them in make them really hard to, to make out details, which is important if you don't plan on painting them. It's nice to be able to enjoy the miniature unpainted if you're just going to use it out of the box here, like a, you know, if, if you're not really interested in going through the priming and painting and, you know, color selection, all that side of it, and you just want to sort of open this up and use it straight away. And in this case, these are, these look really well, really show the detail. Love how close it is actually to these investigator cards we just looked at. They're very easy to see who's who. The flow of the dress as well, the, the folds in the fabric and the, the creases there, um, they come across very well, they've captured that well. Here's Rasputin. I love the hair, the beard detail, the the way the uh, coat details are showing, like the little buttons and the flaps in the pockets. Again, sort of the, the creases in the back there, the texture in the hair, these sort of flame balls he's got, right down to the shoes and everything. Very, very good. And another great looking miniature. Probably not the most interesting of characters, but uh, well sculpted. I'm liking the, the pistol. Looks like she got her thumb you know, cocking back the pistol there. That's kind of cool. And yeah, look at the detail in the face. You can really pick out someone's personality in this. And I think that's the case with all of them. You can make out expressions and stuff. I mean, look at the expression here, too. Very impressive. I mean, they're not, not the most dynamic poses, but I don't necessarily think they need to be. I think they're individual enough, they're interesting enough, they're immediately identifiable. Um, and, you know, just you would a glance at the character cards, at their investigator cards, and you'd know who you're dealing with here. There's going to be no um, trying to match them up. And this is the poor chap, the, the veteran of the war with his injury. With his uh, decoration showing nice and clearly on his chest there. Nice detail on the pistol. I'm not seeing a huge need for cleanup here. Generally, you don't really see it in the smaller figures. You would, in come on games, you, you would see it in the larger figures. You'd see where they were put together from multiple parts and there'd be gaps and things that need filled in. That uh, rope detail is being cleverly um, sculpted. I'd probably run a knife just down here at the back of it to give it a sense that it's a separate part from his leg. But so far, that's the only piece of significant knife work I've, I've seen that I have to do here. And another, that's a bit more of a dynamic pose. I like the way the folds and the trousers are going there. The, the jacket is swung, has been, you know, sort of forced open by the wind as he runs. Yeah, there's a bit more, bit more movement there. Cool. And let's see what we got. So these duplicated. Okay, so there, these are duplicates. There's two of each of these. And wow. There 
is a face a m only a mother could love. I'm liking the detail in these wings, too. I mean, they would pick up a wash really nicely once you had this primed. And you're sort of the musculature at the back here as well. This is a nasty piece of work. I'm liking the extended arms as well that almost go down to the ground. Well, almost go down to these clawed feet. That is incredibly sinister. Scale-wise, let's put it against one of our investigators. And you can see it there. Just slightly taller than the investigator, but the, the wings obviously give it a bit more height. And speaking of wings, let you check this out. That is lovely. Very flat, but I like it still. Apart from that angle, every other angle of this miniature is packed with interest and detail and even the way the muscles are in the neck there and those weird, you know, almost they look like, like slate spikes coming out rather than bone. And the creepy curled up fingers and everything. Lovely. So two of each of those that I just showed. And do we have more minis in here? Okay, wow. So here's maybe a good example of the, the type of plastic I was talking about that, that doesn't show detail quite as well. And I've seen it before with reds and pinks being used. And I just, I've never been that satisfied with how they come across. With these studio lights on them, you can probably pick out quite a lot. But I think in a normal living room or a normal games room, it might not be as clear looking. But it's okay, you could probably paint that up and get, you know, if you, if you did decide to paint it, it would obviously give it more uh, character and let it stand out a bit more. But as it is, just, just a, a little lost there. Uh, so you get five of those and then five of this other type as well. And I doubt they're praying to anything good. <laughs> I think this is where the troubles start with Cthulhu. Somebody finds an old book somewhere and starts to build a following around that book. And then they meet up and they start to chant things, light candles and the like. And the next thing you know, you've got, a, you got this kind of problem knocking on your door. What else have we got? So how many of this next one? So five each of these as well. And the gray plastic, you can immediately see, you can pick out the details much better. Much easier to see what's going on. Uh, kind of a weird looking creature though, sort of there's something conger eelish about it maybe, crossed with a sort of a humanoid conger eel, maybe a touch of a shark in there too. I mean, it's, it's cool, it's just super creepy. And I'm thinking this is the same Oh no, no, it's it's different enough. This is more um like bat like, I guess. Like if you sort of think of a Dracula in mid transformation into bat, it would probably look a lot like this. Uh, it doesn't look to be that happy, this creature. It looks to be in some kind of some significant physical pain, so maybe it is mid transformation, but it's a lovely sculpt. Printed really well. I think the uh the little butt cheeks there at the back is an excessive detail, but hey, you know. All right, okay, so these, so there's two of these. These are that sort of fire demon-y thing, the image in the instruction book there, in the manual. Um, and they're a bit more interesting in the flesh. I think the image in the manual was very dull. It was just this front-facing bit, and it was kind of fiery looking and indistinct. But now that we can see the... The full detail of these horrific little spiked feet, this whip-like tail, and all of the textures and everything that they've sculpted into this. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. More interesting than it was in the book. When slugs go bad. Okay. 
So one of each of these. This is a wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, that is disturbing. Where do you start with a creature like this? Like, where does this creature start? Is this its rear end? Is is its head down here somewhere? It kind of looks like a couple of eyes and a nose in there somewhere. Maybe you can see it. Maybe you can't. I can see it. Um, so this could be its backside. I I don't know. Or this could be the front side, and these could all be individual eyes. Uh, Scale-wise, let me just grab uh, the same mini from before. And you can get an idea there that it is you know, close to double the height there. And then this kind of looks like it made of chainsaw blades or something. Not really sure where it starts and where it ends. Maybe that's the whole point. It's supposed to disorient you and it's disturbing to look at. It unhinges you just looking at it. And this is, I mean, if that's what they're going for with this, they've done a really good job. Can you imagine this moving, writhing within itself with all of these horrific segmented parts? And you can only imagine what this thing must sound like or smell like. That's really cool. Really cool sculpt. I like that. And before we get into the big guys, Haster and, or Haster and Cthulhu, uh, just go have a quick look at these episodes. So I really love this design. I love that there's these, they're almost like sort of videotapes here or DVDs. And you've got the, the, the six episodes of this game. And in each of these boxes, it comes with different cards, uh, different tokens and things. And you will have different instructions inside each for which monsters you need to actually put onto the board. And I guess how you, how you have to lay the board out as well. I think those are brilliant. I don't want to um, open those because I want to explore those as well, discover them as I play. So let's have a look at Haster. Um, dedicated box. Oh, so there's cards and stuff in this as well. Oh, and there's other miniatures. Right. So let's check this out. So we got some more cards. So it looks like four of this miniature here. Looks like they've got a Tommy gun. And they're all cowled up in these religious robes. And it looks like they're willing to defend their newly risen god with um, a lot of firepower. Oh my goodness, this thing is nuts it's almost hard to hold it's so spiky and tentacly and and just like that other creature we just looked at i mean this imagine this thing moving you really you, you probably don't want to imagine this thing moving because it would be it would just break your mind i think to experience something like that and I like the, what I'm assuming is the face. It does look like a sort of a cowled head here. And by head, I mean a horrifically screaming mouth. Um, level of detail is, is phenomenal here. The, the closer you get, the more sort of textures you see. You see this, um, broken skin. What look like a segmented, tentacles you got these the uh, hu this huge mouth here down below with a rows of teeth and a mouth outside of the mouth with more teeth and it's just more it almost looks like writhing sort of um dragons inside there too and just check out all this texture that's that's just gorgeous and now we're we're down to the, the last one here, Cthulhu. We can see um, pretty nice art. I think uh, just just repeated, yeah, around the sides there as well. Let's get in here. We got 
more cards. Ooh, two of them. Cool. Uh, so we've got more cards here. Again, this nice Art Deco design throughout, sort of like with an almost like a chrome finish. Um, instructions for Cthulhu and the Cthulhu's minions, and then these actual tokens as well. Let's have a look at Big Bad. Let's look at Little Bad first. <laughs> What's Little Bad's name? This is Star Spawn. Okay, so the wings are comically tiny. I really shouldn't laugh at a creature like this. This thing will probably visit my dreams tonight. But there's a cuteness here. Maybe it's just me, but the, the little wings, the little stompy legs. Okay, so the tentacles all shooting out from its face and skin and tentacly head and I don't know where the face is. Okay, so that's not cute and cuddly, but there's definitely a... It's not striking fear into my heart. It's, I mean, it's well designed, but I mean, if I see this walking past, it's just, yeah, okay, so I'll, admittedly I'll run and hide, but yeah. And let's have a look at the big dude. So this is Cthulhu. And again, the little wings. Okay, so the, this texture is freaking me out. It looks like he's made of just like barnacles or pustules or something. The, the hands are fantastically sculpted. And hopefully you can really capture, you can see that texture captured on camera. The little eyes embedded into that just freakish skull. There's something incredibly animal about the head. I just can't put my finger on it. Like it's, it's almost cat-like, but also elephant. The myriad tentacles flowing out from its chin or um, into some kind of a body covering beard. Beautifully done. But I think it is the skin texture that's, that's freaked me out the most. And the almost sort of swollen to the point of bursting calves. For sure, those, those little wings are, are just embarrassingly small compared to the other creatures we've seen here. Yeah, I mean, look at the wings on this thing to scale. I mean, they're bigger than its body, but yet the big dude here has got these stumpy little wings. These wings are probably as big, yeah, on a creature that's half its size. Uh, and for size comparison, here's our same human. And now you get a real feel for where the big dude is at. I mean, that's just... Yeah. And I think it's the chunkiness as well. Like, holding this in one hand is, is a little bit of a challenge, especially just holding it between fingertips. But I don't see a huge amount of work that needs done to this for something so large. I mean, sure, just where that arm, we, you know, meets the body there, there's a tiny little seam tiny little line there that you could but you could fill that in very easily with putty or you could just leave it and even accentuate it as this is where the the sort of the shoulder skin folds over the arm i don't think that i've seen sort of minis of this size from come on before that have been pretty much ready to go i mean once i get this magnified up once i get it sort of um onto the workbench I might notice that there is a little bit of work to do on it, but I think that's the best I've seen from Come On, straight out of the box, in terms of the large creatures needing very little work. But that's it. It's right at the end of the Cthulhu Death May Die box. There's some gorgeous sculpting here. The game actual components are, are quite understated. A lot of it, I think, lives within the, the miniatures and within these sort of episodic boxes. And I'm cool with that. You know, we don't have the, the massive sort of 12 inch by 12 inch tiles that we've seen in other Come On games. But no, I'm, I'm impressed with the look of it. It does have a one player mode. 
and hopefully I'll get a chance to play it. And when I do, I will put some notes into the comments below. I'll be the first to admit that I buy these games for the miniatures. I have no problem with that. The quality of the sculpting, the molding, the level of imagination, the, the love, the care, the attention that goes into these things. I want to get that in my hand. I want to check it out from every angle. I think they're fantastic. I also understand that there's a game behind this. And it would be great to dedicate more time in the future to actually playing the games. But that's it for this week. I really hope you enjoyed that. I hope you are a subscriber, that you share, that you comment, that you like. It really helps me out and I just love to see new subscribers. I love to see people commenting below. And it's brilliant to engage with the faithful who comment on every single video, pretty much. Uh, I, I love that. That's that's. Uh, I've said it before, but it's the best part of my week. On next week's episode, I'm back once again unboxing Reaper subscription boxes from Mighty Lancer Games. It has been a long time coming, and that has mostly been down to lockdown and not being able to get across the border to pick them up from the address in the UK. So I've got a lockdown special on those Reaper subs boxes. That's March through to June, four boxes. I'm really excited to get into those. They're always surprising and entertaining, and it's just great to like, it's like unboxing a birthday present sort of every month uh, that admittedly you've paid for, but you have no control over what's in there. But that's coming up next week. Uh, hope to see you then. Until then, take care of yourselves. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.